Good evening guys. We've all had that moment that we load up a certain plane. It has all these kinds of fancy buttons, but it doesn't have a keybind for what you want to use it for. Let's say the fly-by-wire A320 for example. Hundreds of buttons, there are only a few that you can actually alter with a keybind in-game. Well this update is for all of you who have experienced this and I'm going to show you how you can create your own commands, I'm going to show you how you can install the latest Wasm module and many more nice features to come. So stick around and let's have a look. And if you always want to be notified when new content comes out or when a new update comes out, don't forget to hit the little subscribe and like button down below and it would really help the channel out. I've loaded up the A320neo from Fly-by-Wire. Now, why did I specifically choose the Fly-by-Wire? It's because it has tons of buttons that can be flipped, it can be turned, it can be whatever you want to, um, more so than the default Asobo one that's currently in the game. The downside is that most of these buttons aren't bound to any in-game keybinds and it's very hard to control them with anything other than a mouse. Now the default stuff like um, heading and selected altitude could be altered from the basic Asobo commands but the more exotic stuff like, um, I don't know, the PFD max range, I'm not sure, perhaps it's in there, but they have their own individual unique commands that can be found in the keybinds menu. Now, this is where the connector comes in. Today I've released version 0.9.9, .9, um, which lets you create your own input commands. It has a whole set for the A320 already in there, but it also lets you add your own. For any plane that you'd like, you can chain commands. So you could, if you, if you wanted to, you could create one input to increase the heading, increase the altitude, and change the, I don't know, barometer at the same time by just sending one command, chain them together. You could even retrieve the selected altitude right here, then apply some calculations to it like plus 1000, send that and set it. So a whole new realm of possibilities and I'm going to give you just a quick demonstration on how you can use this. Um, I got a little confession to make. Um, in the past when I had to test if a command still worked, I had one button hooked up, set the command in an Arduino sketch, send it to the game, test another command so I changed the command in the sketch, upload, test uh, which is an idiotic way to do this. So I've just hooked up a keypad to an LCD, which I now use to test things. I can just type in the command that I want to send and the connector interprets it and executes it. So it's important to have the connector running for it to work. 2029, like this will work, see? Decrease 2030, increase. And now that little blinking circle has gone out so i'm guessing i could do 2025 2026 no it doesn't let me um it's probably because we need to be airborne for this to work or we can't activate that system what we can do is the nav mode 2035 here we go that's the first one 2036 second one 2037 you get the drift we can do the same for the uh, MFD ranges, so 2040. Here we go, send. Oh, 204. Oh, oh, I'm messing up my commands. 2040. And we could keep on going through all these buttons. Um, where it comes down to is that you can now look up these variables yourself. There are. You can control like the more, the more niche buttons, like the waypoint. It's a dedicated on or off switch even, so we can do 2047 and we can turn it on with 2046 or the other way around, turn it off with 2046, turn it on with 2047. Um, same goes for the one besides that, 2050, 2051 then. Now how can you use this yourself? Because that's the most important part. How I did it isn't really that important. It's how you can use it and how you can yet add your own for whatever plane you're using that isn't in there yet. I'm gonna add more basic planes like the A320 from Fly by Wire. I want to add like a basic subset of all the things that you can use. CRJ is a very popular plane that I have myself as well. 
the Yonker, which is a little bit more basic plane when it comes down to what's in the cockpit. PMD GDC6 is something that I'm stoked about getting things done in. So if there's anything you're missing in there, you can either hit me up and ask me to add them in the next update, or if you don't want to wait, you can alter the events files yourself and use the connector for any plane that isn't implemented yet. Now, I was typing in like the 2000 whatever commands. In order for this to work, serial.begin 115200. Let's say we've got a button hooked up. We could say if button A is equal to low, it's a little bit of pseudocode, so it's not the real code, but it's it's about logic. All you have to do is you can do two things. If you just want to send commands through the Kids and droids flight connector dot h. Here we go. Bits and droids flight connector is connector. We're gonna give it a name. It's bits and droids flight connector. So we've created an object, bits and droids flight connector that we've called connector. How many times can you say connector in one sentence? So we say connector dot send, whatever command you'd like, two thousand. So now whenever we press a button, it's going to send 2000, which in our case is, don't be scared, I'm going to explain this, and there is going to be a GUI to go along with this, to have a more pleasant experience altering it, and to make sure that you don't make any mistakes. But 2000 apparently is something with an FBA mode, and now I have no clue what an FBA mode is, but it's also, oh, there's a little mistake I see, because here I see 2000 as well, Altitude approach plus 100. So if we do 2000, here we go. Yeah, here we go. 53, 54. See it going up. So a really small sketch can already reach many heights. If you don't want to include library, which is also a possibility. If you use library, some basic functionalities is already in there. Throttle. Uh, mixture, propeller, so it's, uh, it has all these nice little handy features, but sometimes you want to pack something light, you could just a simple do serial.println2000. It will send the command 2000, that's it. You don't even need the library, this simple sketch can already alter something in game. We've added one, two, if you count the braces, it's four lines we've added. And you can already alter the game state with an Arduino, with a button hooked up, and you can do almost anything with it by just changing this value. 2001, it's going to decrease the AP. 2002, it's going to increase it by 1000. 2003, it's going to decrease it by 1000. The possibilities are endless. So, we got that out of the way, how you do your Arduino, but how do you set this up from the connector? Quite simple. Here we go. A little bit of a different look than what you're used to. We have two little circles beneath it, boards and Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. If we hit start, we can see that it connects to all the boards. It's green and it's connected to all, and it has a good connection with Flight Sim because it's green as well. Now, let's do it like this. I'm not even sure what this board is, the 34 Leonardo, it's somewhere here, I guess, on my desk. But it's not connected properly, it's probably not even on the same baud rate. So it gives us a sign that it's not connected, red dot, but the game is connected. So that way, if you are debugging, you get a little bit more feedback saying, oh, your board isn't connected, that's why it's not receiving data. Could be because you have the serial monitor open, could be because you have another application open that's keeps the serial line open instead of the connector. So make sure that you always close the serial monitor when you've opened it in the IDE, or you have any other serial interfering with the connection. Now, if I do it here, same thing. Um, it's not even gonna, cause it's the same. Here we go, and if you close it, red, red, game closed, and the board is closed. So I've closed the game, but what I wanted to show you is that if I now hit stop, it turns red. Um, same goes for here. If I press start, you can see that it turns orange. It tells us that it's 
connected to the boards properly and it's attempting to connect to the game. Now, if we start the game, um, I'm gonna go and fast forward this, but you'll see that eventually that yellow circle will turn green as well. So grab the coffee and uh, I'll see you back when the game is booted up and we go into the rest of the connector. Ah, perfect, um, great timing. It just turned green. It also shows you that, you know, if I started it before the game has started, it will just attempt periodically to connect to the game. Once it established the connection, it's connected. So this, you don't have to start the game, then the connector or anything, you can just hit start. It will keep searching until the game has launched, even if you close it and it doesn't have a significant impact on anything on your PC. It's just a periodical check to see, hey, is the game running? Nope, okay, go on, more life. And then it pings a few seconds later. <clears throat> what I wanna do eventually is to make it possible for people who want to, not for everybody, because some people don't want to have software running in the background, but I want to make it possible that you set up your settings and it just periodically checks, are you playing Flight Sim? If so, connect to your setup so you don't have to hit start each time. That is something for the future. Um, right now, this is just a first step into that process. Now, I've talked about the WASM module and events, and the way you install a WASM module used to be download the zip file, extract the zip file, place it in the folder. Now, I've added another way if you've installed Flight Sim in the default location, so the default Windows Store version or the default Steam Store version. In here, we have a menu item, WASM, that now says install WASM. Oh, I hate the word WASM. What? If we hit it, it will automatically look for the folder of the community folder and create a Bits and Droids flight module in there with the events file and the module itself. Now, if you hit it, it will look at the content in there and override it. So if you made alterations to the events file, they will be overwritten with the default one if you hit the install wasm button. So what I wanted to avoid is that you lost all your progress or anything that you've made custom. What happens is if you override it, nothing to worry about. It will create an events.txt alt. The only thing that you have to do is then, oh, actually not quite sure if I want to do this, but here we go. I'm just going to copy this and place this here. Yeah. I'm going to remove the events file. And this is the alt file. And then we just remove the alt. Yes. And we have our alt file back. Now, what, but, but Dave, what happens if I accidentally hit this twice? Don't worry. Like right now, there is no events copy alt, right? Well, this, this one, but it's a copy of a copy, so it doesn't matter. We install it. We get the events of text alt. So this was the file that you saw a few seconds ago. Now, if I hit it again, install wasm, it sees that there's already a txt alt file and it won't save the events file. It will override it, but it won't override your alt file. So it will stay in there. If you made a mistake, you need to go in here, rename it, remove it, or just hit delete. Um, in this case, I'm not quite sure. Once it's shipped, this will, I, I'm sure that I got the right version, but right now I've been playing with my events file a little bit. So I'm gonna just alter this. Oh, there you go. So remove the alt and that's it. So now if we install it again, it's gonna see, oh, and there is an events file, but no alt file, copy the events file, suffix it with alt, so you don't lose your precious data. Now, if you go out and create your own commands, I'd recommend, oh, in the wrong menu, general options, developers, developer mode on. And you'll see why in a second. Apply, you didn't save the changes, you want to apply, yeah. If I go to the world map, load up the fly-by-wire simulations, for instance. 
and I go box somewhere here. You get the option to go to Windows and Console, and it's going to be there's going to be lots of information in here. Events file. Go in here, and we had the AP altitude increase. It was 2000. So if we now do 2000, right, it should send it and increase the AP by 400. It's not the A320neo version, so it takes uh, the default value of 5000, ups, ups it by 100 each time. Now we change this to 4980, I believe. Make sure that there is a space behind it. Don't do this. It won't work. Oh, or this. Nope. All with spaces. So we save this. If we now execute this command, it will still 5,900, 6,000. But if we now do event update event file, and we execute the same command, well, you can't do 4,000. It won't do the 9,000. <laughs> Now it won't do the 980 apparently in this plane, but you see that it gets up by 5,000 it is? Yeah, 5,000 each time. So that's working. We can alter these files on the fly without having to restart the sim, restart the connector. We just do update event file. Now if you want to change things back, we open the events file again. I'm go looking for the 4980, go back to 100. Here we go. Oops, that was a mistake, wasn't it? Yeah, well, who needs 5,000? We now update the event file. And on the fly, we're upping it again by 100. So if you're playing around with this, creating your own commands, you can chain commands, you can do crazy stuff with it. This is the way to update it on the fly. Now, we can put many variables Besides each other, I believe, um, let's take a smaller one that's a little bit more obvious. Okay, so here we take a four. Airspeed is in Mac mode. If it's one, do this. Else, do this. Um, and do something with the AP ink speed. So this increased the speed from the autopilot. And it's a chain of commands. So we could also do these separately. Now the guys over at MobiFlight have a side out that lets you share these commands with other people so people can use it without having to go into the code of the planes themselves or to the github pages of each plane here we got a nice overview a320 a320 dev edition baron g58 whatever you want um let's say crj let's say you're interested in the crj you look up crj perhaps input i don't know alternator off and we see that we get a nice line here that says general engine master alternator one boolean if it's one toggle alternator one so only if it's on toggle it on only if it's off toggle it off so this way you can also create dedicated on off switches for where currently there only is a toggle so it has all kinds of possibilities go check it out at hubhop.mobifly.com what i've been doing to get used to this is um, let's say the fly by wire Fly by wire is here we go docs at master i just went to their github page and they have this a320 uh, a320 events and simfars but i believe it was events yeah this is, these are the inputs you'll find all these events that they have implemented um what kind of triggers they have what kind of uh, other things you can do with them simfars shows the Brake fan button pressed, brake fan, whatever. Oh, in game, windows, behaviors. You get this, uh, it's not really that complicated window. Uh, local variables, and here we go. Nav mode is one. So I think if I move this, you can also see it change. So if you're in game and you want to know some know, know what what is, you just go into the variables. In this case, I have no clue what this is. So selected airspeed. So speed something. I get all things with speed, and if I just go turn it, I can't turn it. I I can't. I should see somewhere something change. I believe. Ah, here you see, here you go. A three A three two A twenty three X and uh, 
A23 Neo Autopilot Speed selected. And if I change this variable to let's say 110, I'm guessing there are some kind of pre-requirements. You can't just alter it like that. You need to button, but it doesn't matter. You'll see the command here, what changes, how the command is called. And then you can play around with it because it's a local variable, so we know it's an L. And we can set the value by prefixing the value you want to set. So zero, one, it's, these are all integers, so whole numbers. Make sure to, if you set a value, you set the integer space, the command. Then we have this little, is it an ampersand? I believe it is, not quite sure. And the zero, it just tells us that it's going to be an input command. Hashtag the prefix. So if you do 2035, this command is triggered. If we do, um, here we have hashtag. So look for the hashtags. 2024. This command is triggered. If we look up, uh, 893, this command is triggered. So that's, that's the hashtag part. And the dollar part is more for the outputs, which are coming uh, rather soon, which tells us on how many updates we want to receive something from the game. So if it changes 100 feet to 100, 200, 300, when you get an update, we don't want to get it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's basically it. So. I've written out this format for you guys. Uh, the backslash is the double, just indicates it's the end of the line. You can put a comment in there. It doesn't do anything. It just, you know, if I look into my file and if I see this waypoint one filter active mode zero, I have no clue what it is, but apparently it's the waypoint button off and on. So that's basically it. Go play around with it. Um, break it, please. Let me know how you broke it and I'll try to fix it. I'm working on a GUI so you don't have to, you know, all this. It, it, it. Changing this may look daunting and it, it was for me at first, at least. Um, I had no clue how to chain these, how they worked, spaces, how they worked. They are very important. So I can't emphasize this enough. If you do like subtractions or add things, make sure to add spaces. Um, same goes for the variables in front. And you can play around with this to all kinds of crazy stuff. And, and yeah, just go wild. So I've talked enough. It's been quite an update. I hope you enjoy it. If you find any bugs, please report them either in Discord, on the GitHub page. I'll link both in the description down below. If you like this content, don't forget to subscribe or like. And I, most importantly, I hope to see you in the next one.